Everything you are or ever will be is a result of what is going on inside your mind. This is the most awesome concept that I've ever discovered, that anybody has ever discovered. That you can dramatically change the outer realities of your life by changing your inner attitudes of mind, as William James said. We talked earlier about the various laws, the law of belief, that your beliefs do become your realities, that you actually see the world in terms of what you believe to be true about it. Beliefs create the actual fact. As a man thinketh in his heart, or as a wom woman thinketh in her heart, so are they. We also know that Law of Correspondence says that your outer world will always correspond with your inner world. That means that there is something in your inner world that corresponds to everything in your outer world. The great Emmett Fox said this when he talked about the mental equivalent. He said that everything in your outer life has a mental equivalent in your inner life. Anything that you want to see different in your outer life, you must first provide the mental equivalent internally. And the Law of Attraction says that anything that you keep holding your mind on a continuing basis, you draw to you. That your dominant thoughts set up a force field of energy that draws into your life the people and circumstances that you need. I mention that because of this. Many people say, well, how will I get a better job or a better relationship? How will I find the information I need or, or uh, get the education and so on? You don't have to worry about it. All you have to do is get it crystal clear in your mind and you trigger into and get into the flow of these universal mental laws and everything that you need will be brought to you exactly as you need it, exactly when you need it, and exactly in the form that you need it. Now, we're going to talk in this session, we talked about self-concept before. We said that your self-concept is that bundle of beliefs inside that determines everything that happens to you. Your self-concept is the sum total result of every single piece of information that you've ever taken in about yourself or your world accepted as true. It becomes part of your self-concept and your self-concept is the corresponding inner mechanism that determines what happens to you. What does this mean? It means that all change begins with a change in the self-concept. All change begins by you taking in new information that changes your beliefs. Now, beliefs are the hardest of all things to change because we defend them so vigorously. We have to be willing to give up some of our self-limiting beliefs. We have to be willing to look at our beliefs honestly. Remember we talked about self-knowledge. You have to be willing to look at our beliefs honestly and say, do these beliefs serve me? Is this what I want to be? Is this what I want to do? Is this the best that I can have? And you begin to question your beliefs and change your self-concept by taking in new information that develops a new self-concept. And that brings us to a concept called the psychology of becoming. The psychology of becoming says that each one of us is in a continuous state of growth and change. That your self-concepts and your beliefs are changing all the time. For instance, when you were a child, you believed one set of things about the adult world. When you were a teenager, another. When you were in your early 20s, you believed another. And as we grow and evolve, we change our beliefs and our self-concept. We change our self-image. We change the way we see the world. So we're in this process of becoming all the time. It's going on. It's almost like this. It's, it's like a tumbleweed. Is that you are evolving and changing and growing all the time, but always in the direction of your dominant goals. Always in the direction of what you are thinking about the most intensely at the time. For instance, an alcoholic or a drug addict is also evolving and changing, flexible. And the other is called psychosclerosis. Psychosclerosis is simply a hardening of the attitudes. A hardening of the attitudes. People with psychosclerosis develop what is called fixed ideas. Fixed ideas lead to rigidity and an unwillingness to change. Both of these lead to getting stuck in the comfort zone. Remember, the natural tendency of all human behavior is for you to start doing something in a certain way and then get stuck in a comfort zone. You get stuck in a comfort zone in a relationship, even if you're not happy, in a job, even if you're not satisfied, in a particular level of income, even if it's not enough. You have to fight the comfort zone because the comfort zone very soon becomes a rut. And they say that a rut becomes a grave. And the only difference between a rut and a grave is the depth. Or another way that it's been put is that a grave is simply a rut, or de a rut is simply a grave with the ends kicked out. So be very alert to that because the great majority of people in our society tend and evolve naturally to get into a comfort zone, to become very rigid defenders of the status quo, to become very hardened in their attitudes. They get into this comfort zone, they fall into this rut, and even if it would be good for them, they don't change. Now, 
This leads us to the two great powers that control everything that happens to you. And the first power is the power of love. The power of love is the power that shapes your personality and shapes your destiny. The power of love simply says that everything that we do is either to get love or to compensate for the lack of love. We said earlier that children's entire personality is formed by the quality and quantity of love that they get and that all adult problems are as the result of love withheld. Love withheld from our parents and perhaps love withheld from people when we grow up. The other power is the power of suggestion. Now the power of suggestion works on us all of our lives. The power of suggestion is extremely strong. What it does is it begins working on us almost from the time that we're born, sometimes from before birth, and the power of suggestion shapes us. It means that every single thought you think, everything you hear, everything that you see, touch, taste, or smell, everything that affects you in any way has an effect on your personality. We say it this way. We say everything counts. Everything counts, and especially when you become an adult, remember that everything counts. Now, the average adult in America watches 20 to 25 hours of television every week. The average senior citizen watches about seven hours of television. Average child watches three or four hours of television per day. You know that the average chief executive officer of major American corporations watches less than five hours per week? Now, let me ask you a very simple question. Do you think there's a correlation between the number of hours that a person watches television and how successful they are in life? Do you think that the suggestive influences, books, magazines, tapes, courses, seminars, people, television programs, and so on, that you watch, listen to, read, associate with on comic strips and the sports pages, who read junkie magazines or nothing at all, listen to the radio, don't do anything with their time or their minds, they say, but I want to be successful, I want to be more successful. I say, well, what about all these things that you're doing to waste your time? They say, well, I don't count that. Unfortunately, nature counts everything. So this brings us to some laws that I want to share with you. The first law is the law of habit. Now, these are also mental laws. The law of habit is very similar to the law of inertia. The law of inertia says that a body in, at rest tends to remain at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. It also says that a body in motion tends to remain in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. The law of habit says that in the absence of a specific decision on your part to change some aspect of your life, the natural tendency will be to go on the same way indefinitely. As a time management specialist once said, the more you do of what you're doing, they want badly enough, they do not have success habits. 95% of your success is going to be determined by the type of habits you develop. And if you have good habits, you're going to be successful in spite of anything else. The law of emotion says simply this. It says that every decision that you make is based on emotion. Is that we used to say over and over again that uh, people are 90% emotional and 10% logical. Well, one of the great discoveries that I've made in the course of my research is the discovery that we are 100% emotional. That we're not even 99% emotional. Every single decision we make is an emotional decision. If somebody says, well, it's the logical thing to do, what it simply means is they have more emotion invested in that, even though it sounds logical. The law of emotion says that every decision that we make is emotional, and it says this. It says that stronger emotion will dominate a weaker emotion. Stronger emotion dominates a weaker emotion. So whichever emotion is stronger will be the dominant emotion and will determine what you do. All action is determined by the emotion that is predominant at the time. And with the, whatever the stronger emotion, if it is fear, fear will determine what you do. If it is desire, desire will determine what you do. The two major emotions that wrestle within us all the time are fear versus desire. World Championship goes on over and over again. Your fears that hold you back, your desires that propel you forward. Now how do you turn this equation so that your desires win? very simple. You use the law of concentration and you think about what you want all the time. You dwell on what you want all the time. You keep your mind fixed on your desires. You become totally preoccupied with what you want and as we've said before, your fears have a tendency to dwindle. But whichever thing you think about, if you think about your fears or you think about your desires, whichever one you think about by the law of emotion is going to determine your actions and your actions will determine your outcomes. 
This brings us to another law, which is called the law of expression. And this law of expression is very interesting. This law of expression goes back many, many years, and it predates even a quote from Aristotle, which says, whatever is impressed is expressed. Whatever is impressed is expressed. Whatever is impressed is expressed. Now, what does this mean? Let me go and sit down while we get the board cleaned off. It means, it means simply this, is that whatever is impressed into your psyche for any reason and from whatever source, whatever is mixed with emotion and dropped into your self-concept will eventually be expressed as part of your personality, part of your reality. It says, in effect, that you see the world through your self-concept. You actually see your concept of the world. You do not believe what you see. You see what you believe. Whatever has been impressed on your mind as a fact or as a truth or as a reality will then be ex He began to think like Napoleon. He began to imagine great plans like Napoleon would have imagined. He began to act with courage and confidence in the face of uncertainty as Napoleon would have. Over time, he became absolutely convinced that indeed this person who was shy and retiring was truly the reincarnation of Napoleon. And as he did, his career improved. He was promoted, he was advanced, he changed the way he dressed, he spoke more confidently, and by the time he found out that he had been misled by the fortune teller, he was already an extremely successful businessman. Very interesting. Whatever is impressed and accepted becomes expressed. And this brings us to another critical mental law, and it is this. It is what is called the law of reversibility. When I first learned about this law, I was so excited I wanted to wrap it up and tie it up and not tell anybody. This is the first time in any form that I've ever explained this law to other people. The law of reversibility says simply this, is that if you achieve a certain level of success, a certain level of health, a certain quality of relationships, then that quality of relationships will create a subjective state. A sub subjective state means a feeling or an emotional state. In other words, if you win a prize, you will feel like a winner. If you fall in love, you'll feel like a lover. If you succeed in business, you'll feel like a success. The objective creates, in other words, the objective reality or the fact actually creates the subjective or the emotional state. Does that make sense to you? In other words, something happens, you feel great, you get the feeling. However, the law of reversibility says this. If you can grasp this, this one fact alone can change your life because it has changed mine is that if you can create artificially the subjective state the feeling the feeling will trigger the law of attraction and correspondence into motion and will draw into your life the people circumstances and opportunities necessary to create the objective that is constant with the subjective and here is the method it's so simple, it's astonishing. It is this, is whenever you think of something that you really desire, imagine that you have it already. Imagine that you have it already. It sounds like a game, like children would play. But it is so powerful that it is, it is awe-inspiring and all I suggest you do is try it for a little while. Just imagine, close your eyes, drive it along, think about it if necessary, stand, relax, do whatever you want, but just imagine that you've already accomplished it and try to get the feeling get the feeling as though it were already a success, as though it were a past tense, as though it were already accomplished, that you don't have to worry about it again, you've already got the feeling. And if you will play that feeling over and over again, this law of reversibility will create this feeling as you dwell upon the feeling more and more, the feeling will actually begin to change things inside you and outside of you, draw you toward your goal and draw your goal toward you and the objective will come into reality exactly at the right time and place. You don't even really have to worry about the process between the two or what the steps are. All you have to do is hold that feeling very, very intensely. And we'll talk about this a little bit more when we talk about mental programming methods. Now the next law is the law of practice. The law of practice is also called the law of repetition, but it says that whatever you do over and over again, often enough, becomes a new habit. You want to be a positive, exciting, enthusiastic person, you want to become wealthy and successful, 
What is it that you want in life? Whatever you want in life, if you will practice it over and over again, it eventually becomes a new habit. If you practice it by thinking about it, you see a new habit takes about 21 days to develop. It takes about 21 days to develop a new habit. 21 days of repeating it over and over again. Now, what we're going to ask you to do as a result of this course and as a result of what we've talked about is we're going to ask you or suggest that you go on what we call a 21-day PMA diet. That means that for 21 days, we're going to ask you to do a very difficult thing. One of the most difficult things you'll ever do in your life is for 21 days, we want you to keep your mind on what you want and keep it off of what you don't want. Keep your conversation on what you want. Keep your conversation off of what you don't want. Keep your dreams, your imagination, your thoughts, your feelings, everything in your environment consistent with what you desire and keep it off of what you don't want. It's very simple, not very complicated. It's one of the most difficult things that you'll ever do. Now, why do we pick 21 days? Well, a very good reason. Uh, you see, it takes 21 days for a chicken that has a brain the size of a pea to sit patiently, calmly, faithfully on an egg to hatch the egg. Now, we feel that if a chicken with a little brain like that can sit the law of reversibility, the very law of emotion, the very law of habit that we talked about will actually begin to be changed. Now, what are the four things you need in order to make this great change? Number one is you need desire. Desire is the starting point of all change. The most important question that you have to ask yourself in life is how badly do you want what you want? How badly do you want it? Or do you want it at all? You see, there's an awful lot of people who want an awful lot of things. But how badly do they want it? If you want it so badly, if you want it with tremendous intensity of desire, there's really nothing in the world that can stop you from getting it. There's an interesting story was told by, about Socrates, and Socrates was talking to one of his students, and the student said, I am hungry for knowledge. What can I do to increase my knowledge? And Socrates said, uh, knowledge is something that is readily available and easy to get if you want it bad enough. He said, oh, he said, I'm sure I want it badly enough. And Socrates said, come with me. And he walked him offshore into uh, the ocean who have undergone great sacrifices so that the mother can stay home with the young children during their first three to five years. And people say, well, you're crazy. You need the money. You can't take trips. You don't have enough money to pay bills when you're not one or two people working. They say, yes, but our decision is to give our children the finest grounding and the finest emotional basis possible. And we feel that the way to do it is for the mother to be home with the children. So they are willing to make the sacrifices. And of course, everybody has to make the decisions with regard to what sacrifices they want to make. The third is determination. Determination means to back your plan with, if you like, iron willpower. Again, every single study that I've looked at and I've spent, in the course of my lifetime, I've spent almost 30,000 hours studying the subject of personal and, and corporate success is that iron willpower is absolutely critical. Determination, the willingness to stick in when the going gets tough, the willingness to persist in the face of adversity, that kind of determination is absolutely critical to developing the new habit patterns of thought that will guarantee your success. And finally, discipline. This is my big favorite. It's usually the only place in this course where I mention this, but discipline is the master key to riches. Discipline is the master key to riches. Discipline, the willingness to do what you know you should do, when you should do it, whether you like it or not, is the critical key to your success. Why is it that people fail in life? It's no miracle. It's no mystery. The reason people fail in life is that they're not willing to do whatever is necessary. They're not willing to pay the price. Half the time, most three quarters of the time, they don't know what they want. And the ones that do know what they want are not capable of disciplining themselves. So the next time you sit there watching the television, next time you drive along listening to the radio instead of listening to an audio cassette program, you have to ask yourself quite honestly, in terms of the wonderful life that you are capable of enjoying, in terms of all the things that you want, is this moving you toward it or is it moving you away from it? Because the truth of the matter is that everything that does not move you toward your goal moves you away from your goal, that nothing is neutral, that everything counts, that the sands of time are running, the clock, the meter is going right now. A very good friend of mine said, remember, this life is not a rehearsal for anything else.
this is the real one. And the question you have to ask yourself is, are you serious about being and having and doing everything that's possible for you? If you're going to 21 day mental attitude diet, a PMA diet, if you will keep your thoughts on what you want for 21 days, if you'll practice the law and develop new habits, practice repetition over and over again, practice the law of reversibility and visualize and imagine yourself as the person you want to be and practice the law of expression that whatever is impressed on your mind will be expressed in your reality, you will see dramatic changes start to take place in your life and sometimes far faster than you can currently imagine. Decide exactly what you want. And uh, the great majority of people really don't know what they want. They want to be rich, but what does that mean? How much is that? When? Uh, uh, how soon? Uh, what are you going to do to get it? So decide exactly what you want. If you're married, sit down with your spouse and decide exactly what you want. Two people working together, a husband and wife working together on a single goal, multiply the power behind achieving that goal more than anything else. It's called the, the great mastermind is the husband and wife working together. Anyway, number one is decide exactly what you want. Einstein said that if you cannot tell your goal to a six-year-old child and have the six-year-old child explain it to another six-year-old child and both of them understand it, then you don't know what your goal is yourself. So ask yourself, is your goal so clear that you could tell it to a six-year-old child and the six-year-old child would not only understand what the goal is, but could tell you how close you are to it. Great test, it's a great test, the Einstein test. Number two is write it down. Write it down, write it down, write it down. There's nothing more important than writing down your goals. Because if it's not written down, it's merely a fantasy. Now they've done a whole series of studies at Harvard and Yale and Cornell and so on about the difference between students who type their notes and students who write their notes. The students who write their notes all get straight A's. The students who type their notes forget everything before the end of the day because writing forces you to use three um, abilities, your, your kinesthetic ability, your physical ability of writing, your audio ability, you see it when you're writing, and your auditory ability, you say it to yourself when you're writing. So you activate the three major parts of your brain simultaneously, like a laser beam from a space station, zap, onto a piece of paper, and your subconscious mind accepts it as a command, as a command, and your superconscious mind starts to work on it 24 hours a day. Just write it down, write it down. And, and it's the most amazing darn thing. If all you did was write down one goal and leave this conference, your life would be different forever. And because there are all kinds of things will start to happen. And you'll say, well, that's a coincidence. I just wrote that goal down when I was in that meeting this afternoon. And then I got this phone call or something in the mail or I saw something on TV or something. It was just, it's just phenomenal. So step number one, write, decide what you want. Number two, write it down. Number three, set a deadline. Tell your subconscious when you want it. I want this by such and such a date. So every goal always ends with a use by date. That is, I achieve this goal by this date. And you write it in the present tense. Number three is make a list. I'm sorry, number four, step number four is make a list of everything that you can think of to do. Just make a list and as you think of more things, add it to the list. Keep writing it down, writing it down. And sometimes you think of something in the middle of the night, write it down, keep a pad of paper next to your bed and quickly write it down so you don't forget it. Just write it down, write it down. That's number four, and this is really important. It's the great turning point, like a massive ship turning in the ocean. Your whole life starts to turn when you write down a list of the steps you're going to have to take. I don't recommend other people's books uh, because I've written so many myself, and I, I summarize uh, hundreds of books that I have read over the years, but there is one book that had a great influence on me, and it's called The, um, the, 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 the Checklist Manifesto. Anybody read this book? The Checklist Manifesto was written by a doctor, an emergency ward doctor, and he talks about the value of checklists when you are trying to accomplish a goal, build a business, raise a child, whatever you want to do, he says, create a checklist. He said, everything in the world, this room, the car, swimming pool, everything follows a checklist. Everything requires a checklist to build it. And the wonderful thing about organizing a checklist before you begin work on a project, it has an extraordinary effect on your life. And what he does is he teaches in the most entertaining way how people who do not use checklists 
died, went bankrupt, uh, uh, the, the most successful people in finance in the world, how they use checklists in order to organize their financial life, business people. Anyway, it's the one book that I would recommend. It's a short book. It's just fascinating reading. It's called The Checklist Manifesto. Anyway, so take your list of goals and organize your list by priority. Make a checklist. What, what's number one? What's number two? What's number three? And so on. And as you get more information, change the list, reorganize it, write it, move things up and down. Step number five, or step number six, is to take action on your list. Take action on the most important thing on your list. Do something, launch, get going, do it now. Do it, in, do, do it immediately. Get up and do something. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be revising your papers. It can be making a phone call. It can be ordering a book. It could be something, but do something which is sort of like the kickoff in a football game. Just kick the ball off as far as you can. And number seven, and this is going to make you rich, happy, popular, and thin. Uh, number seven is do something every day on your most important goal. Do something every day on your most important goal. So here's the exercise I'm going to give you to take home with you and do when you leave this. And by the way, from now on, whenever you bring on a new person, put them through this exercise. If they will not go through this exercise, do not waste a minute of your time with them because they will never be successful if they won't follow your guidance. And, and here's, the, here's the exercise. Take a clean sheet of paper and write down goals and today's date, and then write down 10 goals that you would like to accomplish in the next 12 months. Don't worry about two years or 10 years or five years. Just 10 goals you'd like to accomplish in the next 12 months and write them in the present tense. Almost like you're, you're submitting an order. And just write down, I earn, I achieve, I weigh, I drive such and such a car, I own, whatever it happens to be. And the goals will be financial goals, family goals, physical goals, and so on. Write down 10. And then you take this list of 10 and you say, if I had a magic wand and I could wave this magic wand and I could have any one goal on my list within 24 hours, which one goal would have the greatest positive impact on my life? Which one goal? And go over it. And usually this will jump out at you. It'll jump at, out at you like a, a spider in a horror movie. And it'll grab you. And put a circle around that goal. And that's a goal you transfer to a clean sheet of paper. And then you follow the seven steps. Write it down. Set a deadline. Um, write, make a list of everything you have to do to accomplish it. Organize the list into a checklist. Take action. And then do something every day.